Good evening everyone, it's Rebecca from Silver Grey Foliage, hello. Um, welcome to the YouTube channel, please do subscribe using the bell icon at the top and then you'll know everything that we're doing, when it's coming up um, and um, hopefully follow along as we grow this year. Um, the clips that are coming up are about watering in our greenhouse and what's going on in our greenhouse and our cold frames. Um, it was actually filmed on Saturday. Um, I wasn't going to post, I'm going to be completely honest, I wasn't going to post this video. Um, but the reason that I have is that I received a really lovely email from a lady this evening um, talking about how much more relatable it is um, to see what we're up to growing in our garden and in the field um, than some of the bigger growers around um, in the States um, and Canada and Australia. Um, and that really encouraged me um, because kind of UK-wise, we're a small to medium-sized grower. Um, we grow in our gardens that are about a third of an acre and then we rent half an acre and we're just expanding into that full acre. We grow cut flowers um, and foliage, um, quite a lot of foliage actually, um, for florists, um, DIY weddings um, and then local bouquets and funerals as well. Um, so watering in the greenhouse is what's coming up and um, some clips of some things that we've potted up and just the strategy about how we're going about doing that um, at the moment um, and just thinking about what on earth we do next because the greenhouse is full. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for your support. Do subscribe, do share um, and share your comments below. Um, I love to respond. Good morning everyone. Um, so I'm in the greenhouse this morning um, doing a bit of watering. Um, I try not to water too too much at this time of the year. So we are in February. It is the first week in February and in here in general we have got perennials. Um, so most of the things in here are perennials that were sown in December. Um, back end of December, early January, but actually mainly December. Um, it was really good therapy. I love doing a bit of sewing over winter um, and perennials cope in my experience. Now, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't plant everything um, in December, um, but we had a really selective choice of things that we wanted more of that we thought would do okay, and they have. Um, so that for us was a good gamble. What I wanted to show you is a little bit of what's going on behind and a little bit of what we have in here. Um, because it would be really easy to get the hose pipe out um, and just water. Whereas what I'm actually doing is watering with a watering can with a really dilute seaweed feed at the moment. Um, and then also just getting things down and watering them outside. And the reason that I'm doing that, you can see behind me um, that there is a shelf that's empty. Um, so there were two trays on there and, and a half tray and I've taken them outside to water which means that I can check underneath um, all of my trays for slugs and I can check the shelves for any slugs that are hiding as well. Um, so I try and do that. I mean it stops things from dripping below um, but mainly my reason for doing it is to make sure um, that if there are any obvious slugs um, then I'm getting rid of them as, um, as I find them. Um, so we're not watering too often, uh, once every couple of weeks, and that is enough for us at the moment. So I think one of the other things to spot is that our greenhouse um, is absolutely packed. So we are in early February. Look, those are the ranunculus underneath, and the ranunculus are going to go out today into the field. Um, but we've got an extra level of staging on plastic crates, loving to use that kind of um, urban waste going on there. Um, some tulips at the back and some more tulips actually that are going to make their way in. More, a couple of delphinium that I'm just giving a bit of protection and we're just absolutely full to the brim in our tunnel, in our greenhouse even. So you might say that that's a little bit problematic and I completely agree. It's February. I haven't even started on the annuals for this year and our greenhouse is full and that is really forcing us into a decision. Um, so the decision that it's forcing us into is soil blocking, um, which is something that I've avoided because it takes time to water and a lot less forgiving um, than these trays um, that we use. Um, but it's also cheaper to get going on. So we have lots of trays that soil blocks will fit into already. Um, investing in a few more of those isn't too, too much. Whereas investing in 104 cell trays, which is what I really want to do, um, is 
just super expensive and you have to buy them in 25s and actually we'd probably need like 50 or so um to get us into the season um and that's a big investment so something that we will do later in the year if soil blocking doesn't go well um and if soil blocking does go well um then we'll just have to think about the amount of time it takes and consider um whether we're going to buy the 104s or not i think in general terms we will probably end up buying the 104s because of time like we're not time rich and we have other jobs we have kids um and um growing this and making it successful is really important but that means that we have to be lean with our time as much as anything else um so that's me in the greenhouse this morning um, i'm gonna give you a show of the tunnel in a minute when i get that far i'm just gonna finish watering in here first So the downside of watering in this way um, is that it makes a bit of a mud bath outside our greenhouse. Um, but it's also a fair indication to show you of how much we are in and out of the greenhouse over winter. Um, I think there's the expectation that over winter we don't really do very much, but the muddy path here is a really good display of how often we are to and from. So one of the things that I'm aiming for this season is to be a little bit more lean. I mean, I say a little bit, there's nothing lean about our process really, um, in that we grow in our garden, we propagate in our garden, um, we don't have significant covered space, and then we plant up at a field that's like half a mile away. Um, so these are, however, some seedlings that we um, sowed in autumn, they're perennials, so in the here, We've got some pot and tillers and the smegastache um, next door. There's some shasta daisies and ridbeckia, it looks like, um, and achilles. I think that's love parade in there, which was really lovely and really um, popular last season. I'm going to get one of these out and see how it's doing. So I've got out one of the pot and tillers. Um, I can't remember which colour this is, but that's not really the point of this exercise. Um, on top you can see we've got some lovely green growth um which is really nice but that's not really what i'm interested in so these were sown in uh, like late summer so august um early september is when we did most of our sowing this year um and they were potted up in december when we were having that horrible um horrible cold so they potted up in the kitchen um which is one of the things that really drove us to move or to start moving our propagating out of the kitchen because it was just ridiculous um uh, potting up like in the evening during the day um at the kitchen table um so what I'm actually interested in is not the green growth on top, it's to see how well the roots are doing um, down below. Um, so they went from our 56 cell trays that are kind of an inch and a half, two inches wide, and they were filling those into a nine centimetre pot, which is bigger than I would like, but that's what we have. So we recycle all of our pots um, and that's what we have. So that's what I'm using. I'm not going to go out and buy smaller pots to make it quicker to get things in the field. Um, as we gather um, other pots, um, I will absolutely use them. So I'm going to just turn this upside down and turn it out and hopefully... Um, there'll be some roots to see starting to get to the bottom so again we're early February I'm not planning on um, planting these out for another month or two um, so being able to see any roots um, is a positive but it's not expected okay so I'm going to give it a go I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to get on camera in terms of the turning upside down uh, oh there you go it's like a sand castle okay and then dropping my pot I'm going to turn it so hopefully you can see there's some little white wiggly lines um they're not filling the pot so if you look around the side um, you can't see any roots coming out to the side there um, but when you look at the bottom of this one you can see some little white lines and those are roots so that's a really lovely sign that these are happy plants not just on top but underneath i'm going to pop that back in um, I have to say, I'm actually really rubbish at building sandcastles, um, so I'm pleased to have done this successfully. Um, the other thing that that's shown me is that the soil here is okay. I mean, it, it's not making my hand wet. It's, you know, it's definitely changed the colour of my skin, so it's made it a little bit damp, um, but it's it's not wet. Um, and that's okay. Um, I'd like them to be a little bit wet than that, but not so wet that they get soggy. Um, so I'll give these a bit of a water too as well today. 
so there you go that's what's going on in our greenhouse at the moment um in terms of watering um those ranunculus are now in the field and we'll catch up with them later in the week um the job at the weekend was just to get them in and happy and covered and protected um i'll show you more um as the week goes on bye for now